All right, I'm going to keep this relatively short. I think I have about 10 minutes uh, to talk what I want to basically talk about the mission of Code.org. We're a Seattle-based nonprofit. We're probably one of the fastest growing nonprofits uh, perhaps ever. We had, in the last two months, we've gone from one person to almost 30 people, uh, which is probably very fast growth. A lot of people saw our video. How many people here had already seen some version of that video passed around on the internet? Yeah, so within the tech community, community it's been spread a lot. Uh, I want to basically give the group here an update on what we're up to and how you can help as well and why we're doing it. Uh, so Code.org is about unleashing America's untapped opportunity. And hello. Uh, so you know, America, you hear a lot about STEM education, which means science, tech, engineering, and math. And we all know we're falling behind in math and science. That's an old story. For decades, we've been trying and failing to catch up in math scores to other countries. But this old story masks a new and much, much bigger problem. So over here, I show you a pie chart showing basically all of the time high school students spend studying all math and science and the percentage of it that is spent on studying computer science. And on the other side, you see jobs across all math and science. And among new jobs, how many of them are for computer scientists? So there's a huge mismatch between what we're teaching our children and what our actual economy needs uh, to, to basically get people to do. So um, this shows a graph of computer science majors year over year. And you can see basically kids graduating out of college, there's fewer now than there were 10 years ago. And this is because there's almost 20% fewer schools teaching computer science than there were 10 years ago. Uh, and you can also see the percentage of women in this field is incredibly, incredibly low. It's the most gender differentiated field of study there is in this country. At the same time, these are actually literally the highest paying degrees in the country. So the root problem has to do with high school enrollment. This shows the different categories of stuff you could study in high school, such as history, English, science, math, foreign languages, economics, arts and music, and the smallest little box there is computer science. And people ask me, well, why are you putting it in that bucket? Why aren't you putting it in the math bucket or in the science bucket? And the reason is, in 38 of our states, the states put it in a separate little bucket, and it doesn't categorize as a math or a science, and it doesn't count towards math or science. And so in that tiny little bucket, only 5% of schools even teach this topic. And of, among that little 5% tiny box, only about 15% are women, and less than 10% are students of color. So if you compare basically the job growth in this space and the number of students studying it, there's literally 1 million jobs more than students over the next 10 years, which adds up to $500 billion of salaries. And you know, for a niche little kind of field like computer science, uh, you'd think you know, this is a small problem, but this is a fiscal cliff-sized problem that we need to basically help solve. And each one of these jobs, data shows, can support actually four or more new neighborhood jobs. So solving this problem can literally add five million jobs to the US economy, which is pretty much half of the entire uh, economic crisis that we're dealing with right now. So aside from adding jobs, for me, I'm doing this because fixing this problem is about fixing the American dream. You know, Not enough schools teach this, and exposure to this field is a fast track to the, to the best lives in the United States. The, the American dream isn't to go out west and build a log cabin anymore. The American dream is to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. And if you go to a school that simply doesn't even teach this course, you will never, ever have that chance of, of getting there. So separately, this is also not just about tech companies or jobs. I, I got into this because I'm in the tech industry. And you know, for 20 years of trying to hire software people, you, know, it's, you quickly realize how hard it is. It turns out 2 thirds of software jobs are outside the tech industry, in banking, retail, or government. And separate from actual software jobs, I firmly believe we need all of our children prepared for the 21st century, regardless of what field they want to go into. So you know, right now, if you graduate high school in this country, you learn that red blood cells carry oxygen, or that water is H2O. And you're probably not using that water H2O information in your daily lives, but you wish your lawyer knew the difference between the cloud and a server. And most lawyers don't learn that, but they know that water is H2O. Why aren't we teaching these things at the same time, at the, you know, alongside biology, chemistry, et cetera? Um, so we launched this short film to change the discussion. Uh, We've recruited support from dozens of leaders who basically all said this is a great idea, whether it's presidents like Bill Clinton or, or Barack Obama, business leaders from Richard Branson to Sheryl Sandberg. 
then a whole bunch of celebrities. I have some example quotes uh, to just show the range of people who care about this. This is from Stephen Hawking, uh, probably one of the smartest people alive, saying that no matter what you want to do, whether you want to get a job or explore the universe, this is something you need to learn. All the way to Snoop Dogg saying, support the American dream, mm, make coding available to everyone. Uh, but this is basically, we realize we've touched a chord with Americans everywhere. This is a problem that isn't just about the tech industry, and it's not just about the jobs. It's about preparing all of our youth for the 21st century. And it's a big, big problem. There's over 100,000 schools in this country that don't teach computer science. And even the ones that do, that's on the order of 10% of students even try it. So we have a huge amount of sort of opportunity as well as a problem to solve. So the impact of our one video was we had 20 million views. We made it to number one on YouTube uh, for a day ahead of Jennifer Lawrence, and that was the week after the Oscars with her famous fall and all that. Um, we've had more than three and a half million students try to learn online. Uh, code.org is now the number one referrer of traffic to Code Academy and all the other Learn to Code websites. Uh, we've had, we've, we're just about to hit 800,000 signed petitions, which is four times the largest ever White House petition, which was for gun control. Uh, and thir over 13,000 of the 100,000 schools that don't have computer science have now asked our help adding computer science to their curriculum, which is a big deal. Uh, so, and for me, some of the most important metrics is we've now had 25,000 engineers volunteer to, to help teach and mentor these kids. Uh, and the schools that have used our video to promote computer science, they've managed to see enrollment triple. Our biggest problem now is for those 100,000 schools that don't teach this, how to bring this field into the school, how to get teachers into the school, uh, and how to get students to actually participate. So, uh, and on top of that, we need to basically motivate kids to actually learn this. And we know that our video has resonated. You know, we get messages like this all the time on our Facebook page, et cetera. People saying, thanks to your like five minute video, now I know what I want to do with the rest of my life, which is, uh, Obviously, different people are moved more or less than others. Um, but we've had people from Bangladesh setting up coding clubs, or in, in Kosovo, people have started tutorial groups and whatnot. Um, so what's important for us is to basically get this group and really everybody in the tech industry united to help solve this problem for our country. And it's not a problem to solve for the tech industry. It's a problem to solve to help add 5 million jobs to our country's economy and to provide an upwards path to the, to the classes of people who just don't even have this in their schools. So we're building a public-private partnership. Uh, you know, we're a very new organization. We only incorporated almost exactly a year ago, and it was just me until literally three months ago. Uh, we're now about 30 people, and we're partnered with many of the oldest education orgs in technology, including the College Board, uh, the Association for Computing Machinery, the Computer Science Teachers Association. Uh, we have very audacious goals. Our short-term goal is to get computer science into more classrooms, change the rules in the states, in some easy states, and inspire people. Our medium-term goal is that every single school in the country needs to offer at least some form of computer science, and every single state must recognize that computer science actually is a STEM course. And then in the long run, we want every single student to get at least the same level of exposure as you would get to the whole you know, water being H2O level of knowledge. Uh, these are very, very difficult goals. Um, one advocacy part of this is changing the policies in the states. In 41 out of 50 states, computer science didn't count towards high school graduation. Uh, and so you could study it, and it just wouldn't count towards your degree. Uh, that was about two years ago. It's now switched to 36 states. So just to show you that difference. And this graph is as of two months ago. We expect it'll be down to 34 states just two months later. We're basically going state by state telling the school boards look, we have 800,000 people who've signed this petition. Why doesn't this count for high school graduation? Uh, so among the ways people can help is basically spreading the word, calling your school boards, signing our petition on our homepage. And then the last thing is we want to launch a huge campaign to inspire America to be great again. We know we've struck a chord with an audience who really wants this. Uh, despite record divisiveness in our country, Americans are unified in one thought. We really want to plan that can help fix America's problems. And this actually is a solution to unemployment and inequality, which are two of the biggest problems that obviously our politicians in DC are not doing anything to fix. Um, and our marketing goal is to inspire the entire population to basically 
get rid of the stereotype that computer science is just for these geeky white male geniuses, which is how your, your perception of computer scientists is, and to basically help spread a word that any American can learn the basics. Uh, that's a picture of me teaching Eric Cantor, the House Majority Leader, how to, how to write a line of code in JavaScript. Um, I've done the same thing with Ryan Seacrest, uh, and we're going to increasingly spread a campaign of basically showing any American can learn at least how to run, write one line of code. And that's something everybody here can help support and be a part of. Um, so if you want to help our mission, the easiest thing to do would be to visit code.org, sign the petition, and if you haven't, shared the video. Uh, we're also hiring engineers, <laughs> as, as almost every tech company is. If anybody wants to help a nonprofit to basically fix the engineering hiring problem, we'd love your help as well. Uh, and thank you very much for Greek Choir for giving me the chance to basically talk about code.org and pitch our mission to the group. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>